Well, as some of you may know, my last church was named in honor of St. Paul. And the, the normal symbol in Christian iconography for St. Paul is an open book with a sword behind it. And that has figured in the, the decoration of lots of churches named after St. Paul, including that one. There is the church banner, which is, shows the book with the sword behind it, hanging in the, the area between the church and the parish hall uh, very prominently. Uh, and it happened now many years ago that on Theological Education Sunday, which is one of those things that we're supposed to do every year but we never quite get around to, uh, I had imported this really, really high-power uh, seminary professor, someone who was working in, in the diocese as she was headed toward retiring, but who was very prominent, very well-known. And uh, somehow I'd managed to snag her to do the sermon on Theological Education Sunday. And we were walking around the church on Saturday when she came to have a look at the place, and she saw the banner. And I guess here I'm, I, I can speak from personal experience. When you've been a professor long enough, you come to understand that everyone is entitled to your opinion. And she looked at it and said, I, I don't like that. It's a symbol of violence. Just sort of out of nowhere, we're having this conversation about, you know, trivialities, and suddenly this sort of heavy thing dump, dumps into the middle of the conversation. I didn't want at the time to distract her too much from the fact that she was preaching the sermon for me the next day, so I didn't really want to disagree with her. And so I didn't. I don't recall what I said exactly. Um, but with the approach that almost every coward uses routinely, I can say, if I had it to do over again, what I would have said is that in a way the sword there doesn't really represent violence. Now, it, it, it represents in a part the martyrdom of St. Paul. He was martyred, and yes, he died violently. And it certainly is the case that through 2,000 years of Christian history, violence has been taken up by Christians using various pretexts that they've found in Scripture, including references to Jesus coming to bring discord between people, the sort that we hear in the lesson this morning. But I think it's important to remember that what Jesus is talking about whenever he tries to draw distinctions of the sort that we hear in the lesson this morning, and even more so when he talks about, I have not come to bring peace but a sword, things like that, where the, it seems like he's suggesting that there's going to be problems. What he's talking about is the sword of the Spirit, the sword of righteousness that St. Paul talks about that comes to cut things, but the things that it's coming to cut are more what is righteous and what is unrighteous, what is of God and what is not, what is holy and what is not. When Jesus talks about those who do what is righteous and teach it versus those who do not do what is righteous and teach that, that's the sort of thing that the sword that, 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 it, that was in the, on that banner was meant to come and help us to separate. It would be nice if in our hearts and in our souls there was the part that wanted to do the righteous stuff and there was the part that wanted to do the unrighteous stuff and it was pretty clear where those two parts were so it was easy to cut them in two and get rid of the unrighteous part. But unfortunately, it's never quite that easy to take a metaphor from the grocery store. I mean, we're pretty well marbled on the inside. If you go to the meat counter, you're always looking for that, that wagyu beef that has the nice marbling of fat through it. Unfortunately, we are pretty well marbled with the unrighteous stuff. It's all through us. St. Paul even says at one point, whenever I want to do something good, something bad is close at hand. I certainly have found that to be true in my life. So when we hear Jesus saying this, I, I'm, what, he said, what he says in the lesson this morning about what we teach and what we do, it's important to remember that it's unlikely we're ever going to get to that point where we only do the stuff that falls in the good category. But that, that sword of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, is always going to be there helping us maybe to tease those things out just a little bit. So that in the end, perhaps, if we're lucky, if we try really hard, if we have a great deal of grace poured out on us by God, we might end up with a little bit more on the righteous side than the unrighteous side. So my difficulty when I hear a lesson like the one we heard this morning is that I want to put myself in one of those camps. Which am I? 
I think if I'm honest with myself, if we are honest with ourselves, minute by minute in our lives, we find ourselves in both categories. It is perhaps only with that spiritual surgery that we're able ever to sort the one out from the other and perhaps see what it is God truly intends us to be. That, at least for me today, is my hope. Ask me again in five minutes, ask me again in five years, who knows how much further I will have gotten along. If I've advanced at all, it will only be by the grace of God. Amen.